Which launch controller should you buy? We get that question a lot, and in this video, I'm going to answer it. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We sell a variety of launch controllers on our website, and it can be confusing for people who are just starting out. So in this video, I want to tell you a little bit about each one of them and why you might choose it over the other ones. Now, the most simplest one that we sell is called the Sky Controller, and that's this one right here. Um, we like it a lot because it has a key that actually looks like a key, so when you're with young kids, you say, put the key in, and it looks like a key, and then they just put it in the hole, and that's what arms it. Um, we also like it because, as you can see, it's got a red light right here, and this is an LED, and this is daylight visible, so when you're out in the bright sun, you can actually see it compared to other launch controllers. Um, this controller, and let, oh, let me say this right off the bat, launch controllers do not launch rocket engines. That's right, they do not start rocket engines. What they do start is the igniter. Now it's the igniter that actually launches the rocket engine. So the question that you should be asking is, which igniter are you going to be using to launch the rocket? And that's a good question because there's different igniters and each of these controllers can launch a variety of igniters, but not all of them. Like this controller right here can use the Estes controllers, uh, the Estes igniters, or also called the Estes starters. It can also fire off E matches, which are these right here. And they can do low current igniters, and E matches of the lowest current igniter. So any launch controller can fire off an E match. This one can fire off the Estes one as well, but it cannot fire off high current igniters like the Aerotech, um, this one is called the First Fire Junior, or the First Fire, um, and this one is from Quick Burst. This is the Quick Burst Twiggy. It can't fire off these. It just doesn't have enough battery power to fire these off, and so these would light the motor. So if you can't fire these, the motor's not going to go. So this one is good for small uh, rockets like an A, B, or C, or D engine that uses the Estes controller, uh, the Estes starter, or an E match. I don't want to get this too complicated for you. Um, it's also good for just a single engine. So if you want to do a cluster of engines, then we would recommend that you move up to the Estes controller. Um, this one is a two-button controller, and we do have a video on this one on our website, so there's going to be more information there. Uh, the nice thing about it is two buttons, so you have to hold down both buttons to launch. So this gives you an extra measure of safety, especially if you're working with a lot of kids like a group and your back is turned and you don't know what they're doing at the controller, they have to hold both buttons down to launch the rocket. Uh, the other nice thing about this controller, it has 30 feet of wire, so you can launch motors bigger than a D engine. So when you get to an E engine, an F, or a G, you want 30 feet of wire. Uh, this one has it, where this one is only 15 feet of wire. Uh, the other nice feature about this is it can be used for clusters. You can see there's two sets of clips, so you can do one motor, two motors, three motors, or up to about four motors. And these are the Estes um, starters again. These are the ones that we would use for clustering. So these are good for black powder. Um, they will also set off the Aerotech and the quick burst igniters. So that's good because it has more battery power in it. This has 9 volt, uh, or is it 11 volts? Uh, a controller. So this is good for bigger motors. Now if you want to do 
these mode these starters in clusters then you're going to either need the aerotech controller or the go box controller um, now these are both 12 volt launch controllers and as you can see here on the aerotech controller it has these big clips that will connect to a car battery so this you're going to connect to a car battery and on the other end is just your standard igniter clips um, a ni nice feature about this one has this kind of Star Trek look to it. Uh, the safety key is different. It looks like a little chunk of plastic. And when you push it in, you have to push in really hard to arm it. Um, you're also going to get a buzzer that tells you that you have continuity. And then you have to push the launch button. So this one is also a two-hand controller where you have to hold with one hand and push with the other. Um, this one has 40 feet of wire, so again, you can launch up to a G motor with it because you're greater than that 30 feet distance. And that, that distance is from the National Association of Rocketry. This is their safety code. Um, anything bigger than a D, you want to be 30 feet back. This has 40 feet of wire. Now, the GoBox controller is very similar to the Aerotech controller. It's also 12 volts. So you're going to hook it up to a car battery. Now the clips to hook it up to the car battery are a little bit smaller, but they will work. And then on the other end, you do have your standard clips. Uh, the safety key for this is actually the end of the wire, and it has like a speaker wire uh, speaker uh, connector on it, uh, and that plugs into the top of the go box. So to make it safe, you disconnect here, then you go and hook up your clips. And then when you're ready to launch, you push that back in. Now, the disadvantage of this one is it only has 25 feet of wire. So according to the safety code, you can only launch up to a D engine. But the cool thing about this is you can put more wire on it by just disconnecting the clips on the end. And you can buy speaker wire again um, with these clips on the end so you can like an extension cord. You can make it a lot longer. So you can get that 30 feet. And the, the cool thing about this is if you can get 70 feet of additional wire on top of this, now you can launch H motors and bigger because that's the criteria or the safety code for high power motors. You have to be 100 feet back. So you have 25 here uh, and then 75 feet of other wire now you can launch H motors. So if you're going to go high power, this is a good one to have. All right, so now these can fire off. Because they're 12 volts, any igniter that you're going to have, this will work. Now, we also sell, for those people that want to do high power and want to get that safety distance, we have a wireless launch controller, and it's two parts. You have the base, and this is out at the launch pad, and you're going to plug in your wires directly into it um, like this. And we do have a video on this one, too, on our website. These are all twisted up, but you can see you just plug them in like that. And then this is plenty long where you can get right into the, to the rocket motor. And then the controller on the other end looks like this. There we go. And it's a transmitter, and it's only a single button, so this is doesn't really have a safety key, so you have to be very careful with this one. Uh, put that up in the lock position like that so that you don't accidentally push the button when you put it into your pocket, okay? Um, so this is good only for E-matches. So this is not going to work with the Aerotech or the Quick Burst igniters. Um, these take high current. This, because of the small battery, will only fire off the E-matches. It's, it's kind of iffy on the Estes um, starters. I wouldn't even bother with the Estes starters with this. I would go directly to an E-match. So that's when we're, where you would use this. And this one has a range of about 200 feet. So you could launch up to a K-motor on this um, because that gives you that minimum safe distance. So again... The controller you're going to buy is dependent on what motor you need to start, which is dependent on which igniter that you're going to put into it. 
Um, so I hope that covers it for you. If you have questions, you can call us and ask us. Um, we're here at Apogee Rockets. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. My name is Tim Van Milligan, and you're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, and may the skies be blue, and may all the rockets you fly fly straight and true.